Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to start something that I've been talking about for a while. Something that I've been planning on doing to the Aztec for a while. Something that in the long run has to be done in order for me to probably uh, drive this thing without any overheating problems. I am talking about the radiator. Now I'm not doing the radiator tonight. Um, it's getting late. You know, got home from work, had some dinner. There's still some daylight out. I probably have about two hours before it gets completely dark. Um, but since I had nothing else to do tonight, and since I tore a lot of stuff under the hood apart already for the power steering stuff, might as well just tear the uh, the radiator out if I can. Uh, this evening. Get the Aztec ready to get the new radiator as soon as it comes in. And from my understanding, it shouldn't be that complicated. I've never done it before. Just like a lot of things that I've done in this car, haven't done before. Somehow I managed to get through it. Doesn't always mean that it's uh, problem free. But the uh, radiator, there shouldn't be a whole lot to get the radiator off. Uh, or out, I should say. Um, we basically just have to remove the cooling fan and the radiator comes out from behind that. Um, so hopefully this will be a pretty painless task, I hope. That being said, I did order the radiator today and uh, I ordered it from Amazon. It's an official AC Delco radiator. I wanted to make sure that we got the exact same one for the Aztec, not some generic one. Um, just like the power steering lines, I want to make sure that I'm getting something that's going to not only fit right, but I want to make sure that it is got the same cooling capacity and such that the Aztec is supposed to have. I read some reviews where some off-brands uh, don't put the same amount of cooling coils in the radiators. So I um, want to make sure that we're getting the one with the actual cooling um, functionality for the tech, especially because... Uh, you know the tech and probably anything else with this particular engine and cooling setup cooling system setup um, they're really finicky when it comes to overheating and stuff so I want to make sure that we get it right uh, so got the official AC Delco radiator coming uh, I ordered it today from Amazon it should be here hopefully within a week's time uh, I know that's a long ways away or it feels like a long ways away same thing with the power steering, high pressure line, I ordered that also. It may actually be here before the radiator. It may only be here in a few days. So we already know we got that taken care of. That's ready to go in. So I figured since I got nothing else to do tonight, why don't we try to tear the uh, radiator apart, drain everything, and just start making a mess and seeing if we can get this off before it gets dark. So it's kind of strange because this time last year, the uh, engine was completely torn apart. But now, at the current time, everything around the engine is getting torn apart. <laughs> Isn't that something else? The engine is uh, put together, but I already tore everything out here on the left side. And I tore the... Uh, uh, just tore the air snorkel off of the other side, but you know, it's open and uh, Probably got to take this off because the brace on this side is gonna have to come back off um, What what else do we have to do to get the radiator out these dog bone mounts are gonna have to come off um, Which I've had those off numerous times already, so we'll have to take those off We'll have to unhook some hoses um, to drain the um, radiator, I think all I'm going to do is tear, take the um, lower radiator hose off, which is right here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it from there. Maybe I could do it from here. Nah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll have to do it from that side there. So we'll tear it off from the bottom with the radiator drain out that way. Obviously, we'll have to take the upper radiator hose off. Um, and then the fans... These have to come off somehow, I think. Yeah. Ooh, those look rusty. 
So these kind of hold the fan in place, I believe. We're gonna take those off, uh, unhook our cooling fan um, wiring harness, which is here. That shouldn't be that hard to do. Maybe. Crusties. Quite tuck that around there. And uh, yeah, so oh, transmission lines. We'll finally get to take the lines off. My top line, uh, for some reason, had an issue, and it won't stay sealed. So we'll look at that once we uh, take that off. I don't know if the new radiator comes with fittings or not. It might, but I'm not 100% sure. So uh, let's start getting the cooling fans off here and uh, I'll have to go get my tools out of the tech, my, my sockets and stuff. We're going to start off by taking the dog, moan, dog bone mounts off, take it off of the engine portion. We can leave it connected here and then we're going to take the four um, bolts that hold those on and we're just going to pull uh, the entire assemblies up for those. So these ones here, these are 13s. Um, let's think it was on nice and good, didn't it? They're at an angle also, so I could kind of watch that. Now draining the coolant, I was debating whether I should save the coolant and try to reuse it since the coolant that is in here is already new. I put it in when we uh, when we did the uh, finished the engine rebuild. But I thought of a couple things. Number one, who knows what else is being pulled out of the cooling system. For one, and I'm putting a new radiator in. Not even sure if I'm going to be able to get all the other stuff out of the like the heater core and stuff hopefully it's not too plugged up the car had heat in the winter when it was still cold and running so I don't think the heater core is plugged up which is definitely a good thing because I don't know if I want to get into a heater core job with this at least not yet <laughs> if it's gonna happen in the future if I still have it um, then so be it, but not right now. We don't want to do that right now. And the other reasoning is because this is the thing I got to drain it into, and it's filthy. Um, so we're just gonna probably buy some new coolant, universal, of course. So let me work on getting these off. Well, keep in mind if you're doing this, the unless it's just mine, who knows? Because people who've had this car before me did a lot of weird things to it. This, uh, the bolt itself is a 13, the nut is a 15 on this side, and it's a 15 on this side also. That should be a 13, yeah. So, trains here. So that's what we're going to do, use a 13 and a 15 to undo those. Okay, so the dog bones have been removed. And uh, now I'm going to have to probably do this brace here. So now I'm going to take this out of the coolant bottle. It'll probably drip a little bit, but there shouldn't really be anything in it. And uh, I don't know, I'll just kind of put it over here for the time being. Take the bottle out. My bottle's not really held in by anything properly. I got a little screw that doesn't really fit because the original fitting is not with the car, so I just got this from a junkyard. And uh, now I'll just pull it up off of the thing. There's some prongs there. We were losing coolant at some point because that was a lot fuller than than it is. And uh, what we were doing is when the car was getting warm, the steam was coming up from down here somewhere. Um, once the thermostat opened up and it was passing through, 
we were getting steam and uh, shortly after I started getting it over here too so I believe the sides of the radiator are plastic and I'm assuming there's probably a, a crack and that's probably what was wrong with this car when I bought it why it overheated on the previous owners is because it probably had a bad radiator and um, either they neglected to tell me that or they didn't really notice it when, until it finally overheated on them. So hopefully, hopefully that'll be the, the main issue that we're correcting here. So to get these bars off, obviously I got the one pulled off to the side already. I think these are smaller. Yeah, I think these are tens, if I'm not mistaken. These are loose already, I didn't tighten them down. These are pens. Probably gonna have to take it out, out. Which means we're gonna have to take the cruise control assembly off, or at least move it. That's not that bad, you lift up on this thing, you pull the box out. Kinda corroded in there, don't you think? Just kinda set that there. Uh, are those also tens? Those might be tens also. Indeed. I'm telling you, I've at this point I'm pretty sure I've I'm getting close to tearing up about 75% of everything that's been under this hood since I bought the car. <laughs> okay, two 10 millimeter bolts later. It's also got one of those hooks. Yeah, I'm glad we're taking that off. Actually, we can kind of clean that out. I'll put these up here for the time being. And let's see if this will come off like it's supposed to. Because somebody did something to this one. I know I mention it in every one of my videos, but whoever had the car before me, that bolt does not budge. This nut isn't supposed to be there, so I don't know what they did. But once I took everything off, I was able to swing it because it's loose. Um, so let's see if this will work. I think that's a 13. Okay, never mind. It is quite rusty. I'm not even going to attempt. But again, it's loose enough. And uh, i just able to swing it up out of the way. So at this point, we pretty much have full access to the uh, cooling fans. Um, what we're gonna have to do now is remove the upper radiator hose from the radiator so it doesn't block this and uh, probably have to take this one coming from the overflow bottle to the neck probably have to take that off too so uh, we'll go ahead and get to it okay now this radiator still has the squeeze clamps on all of these hoses and whatnot and I think I'm definitely going to replace those over time they I think kind of lose their uh, their grip so we're probably just going to end up replacing these with the traditional um, hose clamps with, like the screwdriver and whatnot plus those are easier to work with so it's empty, obviously, because the car hasn't been running. So I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> the hood cable's here, but I don't think we're really going to have to do anything with it. At least I hope not. Looks like it'll just, it'll just pass the radiator, I hope. But I guess we'll find out. I actually cut this hose down once already because we had a leak coming from this area after I was done putting my car back together originally. So I cut the hose down. The rest of the hose still seems like it's in good order. And uh, again, the, the squeeze clamp was really the only thing that was on there. So we're probably, we'll probably get rid of it uh, when we do the other clamps and stuff. A little bit in there. It's not too, too bad. Now I believe we can take the fans out. And to do that, I believe it's just these two things that kind of hold them in place. They sit 
and those braces obviously kind of hold it there. Um, there might be a few harness that are going to be in the way, but we'll have to kind of work around them. Hopefully without breaking anything. So, I wonder how easy those are going to come out. Um, are they 10s? I'll start with 10 just to see. Ooh, they're so crusty. Might have to get some PB Blaster. But it, it does appear that the 10 fits. This one over here looks better. So yeah, 10 seems to do the trick. I'm gonna go get my PB Blaster, and then I will uh, come back out here and undo those, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so after a couple of minutes soaking in PB Blaster, I did both of them. This one came out really gross. I mean, it just was kind of coming apart. Kind of, kind of skipped a step though, because I noticed when I was shaking these, the radiator is still moving with the fans. So then I noticed there is actually a bolt there, and uh, there's probably another one over here, similar, maybe. Nope. Oh, is it this one? Right where the uh, computer box is. Looks like it. Hmm. We'll try taking those out. I wonder if these are also. Tens. Yeah, and they also feel kind of grody, so we better shoot them up also with some uh, PB Blaster. Wow, I thought for sure I was going to lose this because it was making some pretty awful noises when I was undoing it, but look at it. I should just replace these. Hopefully I can still get them. With that one out anyway, um, we can see now that the fan is actually able to be separated slightly from the radiator. So the other one, oh, yikes. Right behind that harness, huh? Well, something broke with that one because it looks as though something with the whole radiator has been <laughs> moving with it. So I'm not exactly sure how. This thing connected on, but I will show you. See right there? So that's the entire radiator is now moving with this bolt. It goes up and then it goes down. So I think it, I think that clip just came off. I see the clip moving with it. So I think uh, what I'll do now is I'll work, I'll get this bracket off here, see if that actually makes a difference. Now that we got that taken care of over there, I got kind of worried. I wasn't sure if whatever broke was in the body. Oh, this one's moving nicely. If it was actually in the body of the car or how that was attached. Also kind of figured that this video can maybe actually give somebody a little insight as to what they're going to have to do when they change the radiator in the Aztec because, you know, I've tried looking and the only video that I was really able to find, actually I think I found two, maybe three at the most, but they were all rendezvous. And granted it's all kind of the same setup under the hood, the only real difference is the front fascia, which we really don't have to do anything with, I don't think. So if you're working on an Aztec in the radiator department, this is what you're most likely going to have to do. Alright, so the hangers are out. From there, I'm still loose over here. Oh yeah, see, I'm loose. But over here, I think I'm still stuck where that one bolt is. So, hmm, I might maybe have to try and tinker with that one a little more. So, let me see what I can do. Alright, so I went ahead at this point undid the transmission lines. This line is bent weird. I think maybe I bent it when I was putting it back in and that's kind of why I think it wasn't fitting in there correctly. So I got, it has to come um, upward a little bit. Try to bend it upward. And then I got the bottom one out. Got some transmission fluid. Kind of spewed out a little bit. So I think it's time to drain the radiator anyway. Um, what kind of I didn't look at the hose clamp to see. I think they... Okay, so somebody put an actual clamp on there, I think. So it's a flathead right there. Um, I think my jack is in the way. 
well, no, no, it's it's under there. Okay, so if we get a flathead screwdriver, yeah, still so flat it on this one. Let's see if we can uh, loosen this hose and try to get the coolant to come out. I guess they got it facing a good good direction. enough. Alright. I don't want to lose the clamp. Alright, here we go. There we go. Alright. Oh, it's kind of everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that didn't seem like there was a whole lot in there. Really? I totally expected more than that. Uh, I gotta get more kitty litter. Okay, as far as this weird bolt over here, I think what happened is uh, the metal tab came off of uh, what it was connected to right there because the bolt's so rusty and it's just kind of spinning freely. So I put PB Blaster on it, I got my channel locks on the little thing that holds the, the screw, and it seems to be coming loose now, so I need both hands, but I might be able to get it out, and we'll, we'll just definitely have to replace this one, and probably have to get the clip for that too. All right, so it started coming off. You see, it's out here now. Uh, the metal thing fell to the ground, the little clip, and uh, it got stuck, so we hacksawed it off. <laughs> we don't have to replace it anyway. It was obviously pretty nasty looking. And uh, the uh, harness for the computer it's like seriously right in the way so I don't recall in the rendezvous video the computer having to be opened up and moved out of the way because uh, the wires here uh, I didn't cut through it that tape is just coming off so we're good there um, but it looks like it's still in the way of even the radiator so I don't know I guess we'll find out the fans I do believe are 100% free so now all we really have to do is we should be clear of everything down there. Get this hose somewhere else and uh, carefully pull the fans up without tearing or breaking anything off in in front of them. All right, and the cooling fans are out. So that's what the cooling fan assembly looks like. I forgot to mention under the car transmission lines hook up into this I did not uh, pull the lines out but I don't think the one was in anyway the lines are aftermarket so they weren't fitting in there to begin with that well so chances are um, it really didn't hurt them coming out fans are still good they're not seized up they don't make a noise they do work when the car gets hot that's how I know that they seem to work uh, so, yeah, so, that wasn't too bad, minus that bolt from that side there. Like I said, no damage done. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get them back in just as easy. Uh, so there's our fans. And now, it really opens up the uh, front of the uh, Aztec, don't it? I ended up taking the... Uh, upper radiator hose off completely because it kept getting in my way so I just disconnected it from there there's still orange stuff circulating apparently I really hope that's not after I fixed it I hope that's maybe what was left over uh, from when the car was still in its bad state 
So at this point, I don't, I don't think, I don't think she's attached to anything now. Get our harness out of the way. Maybe move this hose, these lines down here. Those should be out of the way. The hood release, like I said, the cable. It should be okay. Oh my gosh. That doesn't look too good down there. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, she's free. She's free now. This is great. <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> Look, there is more coolant. I wonder why that all didn't come out. Sheesh. So here's the uh, original radiator to the Aztec. You can see how kind of rusted out everywhere so I wonder exactly where the uh, steam was coming from I mean obviously you can't tell now so it was just enough when it opened up and it got hot you'd see all the steam come out here's the drain on the radiator so this would be the side that is facing uh, or behind the grill technically this is the side that faces the cooling fans. And it looks like the drain is there. I wonder if it would have come loose. Maybe with pliers or something. It's plastic, surprisingly enough. So, yeah, it's all marked up. Um, I mean, I don't know if I did any of that, but I'm sure this is the original radiator. It looks like it's rusted out the bottom. Man, look, she's, she didn't attach to anything. I don't know if, uh, well, you know, the, there's the clip for the, that other screw, so it's still there. So I'm assuming they all just kind of hold together themselves. Oh, I cannot believe this. That's gonna, that's just gonna poke through mud, leaves. This car has had a hard life. Overall, I guess it wasn't too bad. I've only been out here, let's see, I got out here around seven. Uh, it's 8.41. Eh, that wasn't too bad. I've got a, got a lot to clean up <laughs> and get organized. The wait for the uh, power steering line. I'm not gonna document the power steering line part because I'm tired of talking about the power steering with the tech. Um, so we're just going to, I'm gonna do that on my own and show you guys the end result. But the radiator, we're gonna have a fun time, I think, trying to get that all in there. I got coolant all over the camera. It splashed everywhere. I'm gonna have to get the hose and uh, hose all this off. Hose the ground, clean up the uh, kitty litter. All right, guys, so it is a hot day. I think it's already close to 90, and it's just a little afternoon, I think. Uh, yeah, it's 12.30, and it's like almost 90, and it's a great day to be working on the Aztec. But um, So the radiator's not here yet. The radiator's going to be here in about three days, according to the uh, tracking information. And, uh, you know, I was, I've been giving a lot of thought to this... Uh, radiator support down here specifically the side that's over here it is not looking so good very crusty um, the side over here isn't that much better but it is maybe a little better and uh, so my, my friends coming over later today um, he also happens to be a welder and he's gonna look to see what we can do about this you can still get these these uh, I think they call it a lower toe beam, is what it's called, that specific piece. But uh, they're like 300 and some dollars brand new. 
So the option could be to maybe go to a junkyard, go to the pick and pull, maybe cut one off of an existing tech and uh, weld it onto here. I don't think there's much we're going to be able to do with this one, but he's the expert. He's going to come look at it and we're going to consider what options. The junkyard, you can get them for 40 bucks. I'd rather take that over 300 and some dollars. The uh, air condenser, or the AC condenser, I don't, I think it just sits here. I don't know if there's other things missing because this condenser is just sitting. It just sits. And it kind of bolts on to every, with everything else. And I think once it's all together and actually, you know, those uh, things that go here that hold the fans and stuff on, I think it all keeps it supported along with that tow beam down there. So I didn't know if somebody messed with this before because I wasn't expecting the AC condenser to be as loose as it is. So I don't know. That being said, um, the uh, screws in the clips that were so rusty on the, the radiator when we were taking the, the fan assembly off and such, I was able to, to find them. I had to order them through the GM dealership. And they came in actually after a day, so I went and picked them up yesterday. So we got two of those, and the two uh, clips that they go into. So we're gonna replace those also. All of this together was 20 bucks. Isn't that something? Just for all those little bits, 20 bucks. So we do have those. We're ready to go with those once the radiator gets here. I don't think there's really anything else that I need other than buying some new uh, clamps for the hoses. And uh, I think the hoses are still pretty decent. I, I replaced this one already. I mean, it's gently used, but it's a lot better than the one that was on here. It feels a lot more sturdier, so I think it's okay. The lower radiator hose, eh. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not too concerned about it. It's not leaking anywhere. Got a new clamp on the bottom already. So yeah. Now other than that, and I'm not gonna film this, but as mentioned, I ordered the AC Delco power steering line and it showed up yesterday so today actually as soon as I turn the camera off that's what I'm going to do let's try to get this back in hopefully it'll work out much better than the uh, previous lines that we've got so the official AC Delco line showed up and uh, I think key, real key is you know how the line is mm -hmm specifically routing because it loops and this is just a, a diagram the pump is there and there's a loop there see so we gotta make sure we get the loop it goes into the rack over there and uh yeah so i really hope that this works out better than it did the last time i'm sure getting both of these lines on from underneath it's gonna be a treat i'm gonna have to go under the car try to fight the fittings over to there and maybe try to get them in there by hand at first and then come up here and try to snug them up with the wrench so it's gonna be a, probably a very painful process in my opinion I'm just tired of dealing with these yes I am ah no joke it was completely sunny and hot the entire time I've been out here which has been I don't know an hour or two at it just started raining all of a sudden. Like the sun was out five minutes ago and now it's it's coming down pretty good. But anyway, I'm gonna give you guys an update real quick. I just shut the Aztec up for now. Let me show you guys something. So I started putting the, the stuff back together on the passenger side, the uh, line. Both lines are connected to the pump and they're running alongside quite smoothly at the moment. I have to put the uh, this thing on yet, but the uh, the new line, AC Delco sending line, is fitting better. Um, that weird bulge there, though, uh, it's supposed to kind of be inward a little more, but I ain't messing with it. It looks like it's out of the way. Um, so put all that stuff on. Pump is secure. Pump is sitting nicely. I lost the cap to the. Uh, that thing <laughs> so it fell um, and it's gone so it's it's down in there somewhere um, 
so that that should be good fitment the screws the bolts uh, all went in fairly nicely none of them feel like they are out of adjustment or anything yeah, I think it stopped raining I don't know so that's that's good news on the power steering front like I said I started putting uh, things together I uh, hooked all the wiring harness back up to the uh, relay center this is the bottom cover uh, I'm not gonna put that on quite yet just in case something goes wrong plus I need this out of the way because of the uh, radiator uh, now my problem is I am having a hard time getting both of those lines hooked back up to the steering gear so um, both the return and the new sending line uh, I was under the car uh, and they, they don't want to thread in uh, they start to and then they pop out so they're not lining up right uh, it stopped raining it feels a little cooler out here now so I guess that's cool before I wrap it up one thing I was gonna do is since this brace is off I took the cover to the PCM off and um, basically what I'm worried about was when I was taking off that one screw the one support this wiring harness so I was thinking about maybe just taking this and moving it out of the box and um, that way this harness doesn't really go anywhere um, and I've got you know plastic I can put it in to keep the water from, from coming down and stuff on it so um, we're gonna do that I don't know what's under here I think this just sits in there I guess it does and, uh, oh so the air tube is actually under there too I forgot that it's a two-piece uh, air tube system I think it's to keep the computer cool it sucks the air in fresh air and it keeps it cool so we can actually just maybe get it to sit you know somewhere I'm not gonna unplug it or mess with it and I'll get a bag and then that way we can move it as needed and get this harness out of the way because I really don't want to end up poking through I mean the tape is already was already wearing down against it and uh, yeah we definitely don't need any of those wires to be chafed or anything so I'll just move it out of the way I'm not taking the box out because those screws look really uh, those screws look really bad until my friend gets here, there's really not much else I'm going to do. I might try to crawl back under and do the li steering line again, but I'm probably not going to have much luck, so I'll wait for him and uh, just go from there, I suppose. Okay, guys, so it's the following day. Uh, my friend came over yesterday, and uh, he assessed the uh, potential damage, potential repair, I should say. Um, you know, surprisingly enough, it's not that bad. Um, it looks bad. It looks bad over there because it's actually like, looks like it's falling apart and such. But like, you know, he was like putting weight on it and you know, pounding on it. It's not breaking. So it actually is still pretty strong. However, we're going to reinforce it. So what he is going to do is he's going to come up with a uh, kind of like an L bracket. What we're going to do is we're going to just reinforce the sides with uh, these L brackets that he's gonna make or buy whatever he might make them and we're going to pretty much tap them with some self tappers we're, gonna, we're just gonna put it into the sides of the frame because they're still it's actually still pretty strong and then this rear diffu or this air diffuser here which has been off the car for a long time goes back underneath that support and he says that's probably going to help it also once it's bolted back on. Uh, that'll give it support in the center and stuff. Uh, so that's where we stand with that. Um, today's Sunday. The radiator gets here in two days. Here's the update that I've been waiting for. Power steering lines are done. Yes, done. 100%. Hopefully, it'll be okay. <laughs> I got the fittings for the lines into the gear they are tightened and ready to go it was it was a struggle it took a few days to do it <laughs> um, I bought a uh, crow's foot I think it's what they call these um, actually I bought a whole set of them but this helped me get the lines or the at least the sending line which is the one furthest down 
help me get this line on and tightened. So once uh, I was able to get this on and tighten, this is just in case nobody knows how this works. This is what it does. It attaches to your ratchet and uh, kind of allows you to get into tight spaces where you can't get a wrench and use the motion of the ratchet to either loosen or tighten it. So I saw that on another video last night that I was watching trying to find out any kind of tip or trick to do that. So that was definitely helpful. Um, it did take a while to get it at least snug enough to where I can come up here and use my actual 18 mil to tighten it down. The return line, surprisingly enough, went in really easy. Real easy. And it's it's tightened, it's snug, not going anywhere. So the lines are done from there. Lines are done at the pump. Pump is on. Uh, belt is on. And uh, the lines are all connected. The only thing left to really do is get the uh, cradle the lines at the cradle on fastened to it I thought about zip tying it uh, but I don't know because this part here where this return line it is still right up against this axle so when the axle starts turning this is gonna start to get eaten away there's still some play where I can pull it back but this brace is like I think it's I think it's tight I think I tightened it so I don't know, I gotta come up with something with there. But I mean other than that, she is uh, she's good to go in the power steering department finally. I don't wanna break that clip again. But I'll take a closer look at that here uh, soon. I'm gonna call it a day. Since there's nothing else that I can really do. So except wait for the radiator. And uh yeah, Thursday, hopefully. Hopefully the weather, weather's nice enough and we'll get the radiator in. Hopefully it'll be an easy process. And that's all I've got for now, so I'll see you guys in the next portion of this video. Well, while it is looking quite ominous today, I figured maybe I'll try to get the radiator in. Um, the radiator came yesterday. And I just got home from work. So, I'm off tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day I originally planned to do this. But, if I can get it done, at least some of it done tonight, then I'm going to, and that way I won't have to spend my entire day off dealing with this. Well, hopefully I'm not spending my entire day off. Uh, let's get it out of here. That bottle's not looking so good. Cool. Oh. This is still coolant. Wow. <laughs> she blowed it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that's better. This has got the official AC Delco on it. The GM part number here, the AC Delco number up on top. Of course, the quantity. We'll get it out of the box and I'll show you guys side by side next to the one that we pulled out of here. Uh, what it looks like Okay, so here's what they look like <laughs> old versus new So the uh, new radiator looks to be Exactly the same uh, we're gonna have to keep the cap uh, So I'm gonna keep the cap the new radiator also came with fittings for the transmission lines. So that's awesome lower radiator hose right there upper radiator hose here um, the only real difference that I've seen is uh, this has the the foam at the bottom and the new one doesn't. And also the bumpers at the very bottom too. I might have to take those off and use those and put them on this one because we, we definitely need those. So uh, looks like the clips, <laughs> there's clips on this one at the very bottom and this one doesn't have them so they must have rotted off at some point in time I'm assuming from the looks of it and uh, that's really it so that's what she looks like I'm probably not going to film this entire install process we're basically doing the exact opposite of what we did so if some weird issue arises or something I'll show you guys 
what I'm going to do to deal with it. But other than that, it's pretty much good to go. So I'm going to work on getting those bumpers off at the very bottom corners. Put them on here, I guess. And uh, we'll go from there. Again, hopefully the rain holds off. I'd like to get at least half of this job done. It's all to the north, so maybe I'll be okay. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So yeah, it totally uh, rained, um, and it was raining for like two hours, over two hours. It like downpoured. I pulled one piece off of the old radiator, and then it just monsooned. So I had to quickly put everything away, and here I am a few hours later. I'm going to try to start it. It's kind of breaking up now. It's kind of drying. The rain might be over. I don't know. Uh, I was actually wondering if those bumpers, which uh, I did pull off, and I don't know where I put them. Oh, they're over here. They're, they are not in the best of shape. But I, I wondered if these were actually supposed to stay in the car. And there's just a chance that they came off. The ring actually came off this one. But I don't know. But I got them off. And uh, I'll just stick them on the, the new radiator and obviously we'll just set it down into this cradle and go from there. Um, the new braces are going to be placed on the outside so they don't have to be inside. Uh, so I can do this now and there really shouldn't be any issues. The uh, I put the new things for the condenser in, the new screw uh, tabs, or if they're actually called nuts, I'm not sure, they might be nuts, but I got them in on both sides, so that should be good. So once we get the radiator to sit in there, then I can go downstairs and get the cooling fans, bring them up, and I gotta try to use our new long screws. Yeah, try to use these to get them all together and then we can fasten them we can fasten them together and then work on everything else okay so I've got the radiator sitting in the uh, holes match the bumpers down below that one hole there it is slightly chipping away but and the one bumper the rubber piece is you know kind of falling off I probably should have got new bumpers if I had known that that's, uh, you know, that was a, uh, gonna be an issue, but if it was something that I was gonna use more seriously, then maybe, but whatever, it is what it is for this vehicle anyway. Um, now those there, those kind of rusted off my other radiator, but if we look at the bottom of the fans, uh, this being the bottom here, we got some notches at the very bottom. A couple of notches on both sides. I think it's supposed to maybe, I don't know, maybe ensure that the fans go in the right way. I don't know. But either way, uh, that, that's going to be kind of interesting to try and get those uh, fans to sit in those notches. Maybe not. Maybe they'll slide right in. Um, so. This is why I'm kind of glad I, I moved the computer out of the way, and then I can kind of move this harness a little bit, move it around a little bit. So, uh, also, I took the, uh, the little clips out of the fittings for the transmission lines, so we don't have to fight with those. We should just be able to get the lines lined up, and we can uh, put the clips in them and get them locked in place. This line here, i got to mess with this one for some strange reason. It, Ended up getting bent at one point slightly, so I gotta try to just bend it up a little bit. Then we can put it in. So let's continue to work on this. All right, so finally dropped the fans in. Once they're on those tabs under there, it just kind of, you know, went right in. So, whew, it is very hot and humid out here after the rain. I'm dripping sweat into my eyes from my hair. And, ugh. Anyway. So yeah, this was a bit of a challenge. Um, now, one thing that I am facing is uh, the, 
this side of the radiator keeps popping out of that hole uh, and the AC condenser keeps slouching down so this is probably going to be the fun part where I have to fasten all of these items together and uh, you know <laughs> go from there well, um, once I get those bolts through there I think uh, I'm putting the like the bumpers up here and you know the fans will then hold everything together and in the correct position where they should be and we should be uh, I'm assuming we should be good from there so uh, I think I might have to fight with this just a little bit longer before I get to that point of uh, bolting them all together all right so all three components are now in place the condenser, the radiator, and the fans. Accessing that screw right there is definitely a lot easier if you move the computer harness out of the way. Um, so that's a good idea. And surprisingly enough, out of these two bolts between getting this one in to all three things and the one right here into all three things, this one was the hardest one for me for some reason. I think because the uh, condenser kept dipping downward and the lines are what are keeping it more level over there. So that took a little bit of time. As you can see, the uh, sun's starting to go down. So there probably isn't a whole lot more that I'm going to do tonight. But the radiator and the fans and all that, they are assembled and in place. Uh, they're sitting where they should be under the car. Um, I guess what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to try to hook these lines in while I still have some light. Hook the lower hose up. Um, I think I can put the upper hose on now too. Maybe put the computer back. The computer doesn't have to be sitting out anymore. So I'll put the computer back together and get that out of the way. And uh, maybe just kind of clean up this just a little bit while I have light. And tomorrow when uh you know we have daylight we'll fill it up with coolant and i'll uh like i said i'll finish hooking up everything else all the electronics and stuff and we'll uh we'll get it running again to see hopefully <laughs> that this radiator is in, in good shape uh and I may even test the power steering um in the previous video if you guys saw the previous video we changed the transmission filter also so uh I don't have transmission fluid yet. Um, honestly, not even 100% sure if that line's going to stay in place yet or not. So, might work with that a little separately. But we can at least do the power steering and the uh, obviously the radiator to see everything is okay and it's holding temperature and whatnot. So, we're getting close. I'll see you guys in the next portion of this video. Alright, guys. Good morning, maybe afternoon. Not sure what time it is. It's Thursday the 4th, which is the day that I was really planning on putting the whole radiator thing in. And kind of glad I did it last night, only because it took a little while to hook everything else back up. So, she's all done. Radiator's in. Everything's fastened down. Minus this, but we'll get to that here in a second. Everything's all hooked back up. These wiring harness kind of got funny. <laughs> I mean, everything's plugged in, but you can tell they're not really sitting. I don't think they're sitting exactly the way that they they were. Got my crappy battery back in there and all hooked up. So she's ready to be started. Oh, fun tip. The air snorkel didn't fight with me a whole lot this time. Uh, it fought with me really bad after I had done the engine rebuild was putting it back on for the first time I got sweat all over everything and uh, the bottom kept getting stuck well this time I did it with uh, I tried to get it on from the side over so I started off at the left side and kind of wiggled it on to the right side and it seemed to fit on there just fine it snugged up it's not coming off thank god so you know, I can't believe months and months ago this engine actually looked a lot better. I had this all shiny, and I think it's from fingerprints and obviously sweat. 
trying to do all this stuff. So alternators hooked back up, ground wire hooked back up, fuse box is hooked back up, engine harness is hooked back up. Uh, computer obviously everything was put in last night got everything routed over there as yeah, should be replaced the hose clamps on the upper radiator hose both ends which are both tightened down and I did the small tube also the uh, uh, overfill tube I did those um, the one down there that was already on the car that worm drive clip seems to be okay and then this one here I wasn't taking this hose off but it should it should still be okay. I haven't had any issues with it. Now, some of you guys may have been wondering this entire time, why don't I just change the water pump with this? Um, and honestly, I thought about it, but at the same time, uh, the water pump, I'm sure at some point, may need to be replaced. But I could tell, you know, things were circulating. I was getting, I was getting heat. It wasn't really overheating, um, you know, on me anyway. It overheated on the previous people who had it. But I think the radiator was the main culprit because, you know, if you've seen the other videos, and I've explained it a thousand times, when the thermostat opens up, you see a bunch of steam coming from this side. And later on, eventually you see steam coming from that side. So I think that radiator, which is right here, is just done. So, oh, actually, I left this out flat last night and it, when it rained. And this, all this dirt came out of that radiator. That's disgusting. So now all that's really left to do is to fill it up with fresh coolant and bleed the system. Now, the way that I'm going to bleed it, this is how I did it when uh, I put the engine back together, is uh, I learned a, a neat little trick and it seemed to work just fine, but we're gonna take this bleeder out here at this crossover pipe right above the water pump. And we're also going to open up the thermostat bleeder. We're not going to take it out, we're just going to open it up. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, first of all, we're going to fill coolant into the radiator. We're going to fill it up. We're going to fill up the uh, overflow. There's still a little bit of coolant left in there from, from uh, when I took it out. And then we're going to use this little bottle here. And we're going to snug it over top of this. It'll fit just fine. you got to work with it a little bit, but you can get that snug on there. And we're going to dump coolant into here. Then we're going to start the car. Uh, and then, like I said, with both bleeders on, um, while the bottle is over here and this is opened, it'll suck down the coolant. And then we're going to just keep filling it up. We'll see some bubbles come out, so that's how we know the air is coming out. We'll see it overfill out of here. So if we start seeing coolant come out of here as we're dumping it into here, we can close that off because the air should be out of there. And we'll just leave it here. Leave it on for a little bit. And then once we see that it's not sucking down coolant anymore, there's a good chance that the uh, system is out of air. So it might take a little while, but... Uh, we'll go ahead and get to it. So today, for this, I'm going to mix my own coolant. So I bought a bottle of distilled water yesterday. And this is the old bottle that I had. I might have poured, well, that's about, about half there. So, you know, 50% water, 50% coolant concentrate. Um, so I bought this. This is Universal Peak Coolant for all makes and models. So we're going to fill up both of these with this gallon here. And from there, we'll just start dumping it in and seeing where she takes us. Ta-da! I kind of cracked my bottle a little bit at the bottom. This is the old bottle that I used, so I think being in the car made it weak. But I put some thread tape around the bottom of it. It's still, it's still okay. A little bit of antifreeze leak, leaking out. But here's what I'm doing now. So we're just dumping it into where the bleeder is or was, and then I'm going over here to the, got this loose already, this bleeder, and I'm just squeezing the upper end, upper radiator hose, and you see it's just sucking it down, and that's one gallon of coin I've done already. Oh. 
Okay, so looks like we're getting less air now. See? So that's almost full. I, I don't have any coming out of here yet, though, so we're going to keep adding it. Oh, see? Okay, so I just poured some in there, and it's starting to seep out of the bleeder. So we should be out of air in that area there. So at this point, I'm probably going to close the bleeder. And uh, go ahead and start it up. And uh, let's see. So, steady stream of antifreeze going through there. So, seven millimeter, by the way. You don't want to over tighten this little thing because they don't like the tension as they get older. So, just enough to snug it up. Just like that. And now I'll, I'm gonna add some more because it's leaking out of there and I don't want air getting into air. It works a lot better, obviously, for not leaking like I am. The moment we've been waiting for. Let's see if she'll start. She hasn't been started in over a month. So um, she's probably gonna make some noise at the top. All the oil probably, you know, probably ended up sinking to the bottom. And uh, this was full, this took a while, kept lowering, so once I got it up, saw it wasn't going anywhere, we got that. I'll have to add some to this, actually. We'll do that before we actually start it up. So let me bring the jumper cables out, we'll hook them up, and then we'll get ready to start it up. All right, we're all hooked up. That still has some cool in it, so we're good there. All right. Oh, see, there it goes. Yeah, it's kind of turning a little bit. All right, let me unhook these uh, cables. All right, so it kept filling up, um, and I just pulled the bottle off, and antifreeze kind of got everywhere. I put the thing back on, put some thread tape on it, and uh, now we just, now we just wait. We're supposed to have the heat on of all days. Let's see, looks like the thermostat is already beginning to rise. So, got the heat on there. Doesn't sound too bad for sitting for uh, oh, you know a month. <laughs> uh, power steering, I didn't put fluid in here yet. It's not whining, so I don't know if there's anything you know, going through the system. I could put some in here, but it's starting to rain now, so I'm just gonna leave that loose for now. I did not hook the transmission lines in. Uh, they're sitting in there, but I didn't clip them in yet because I'm going to hold off on that for another day. So there shouldn't be anything coming out of it now because the transmission's empty still. Let's see how it feels. It's starting to drizzle somewhat. Hope it doesn't start downpouring. Okay, it's still kind of cool. The bleeding process might take, you know, a little while. Temperature still on the cool side, so as to be expected. Running a little bit quieter since the uh, P PVC valve was replaced. The elbow, I put that junkyard elbow on there. I don't hear the suction. All right, well, while it's doing that, I'm gonna start cleaning my stuff up because I think we're pretty much done with all the tools and whatnot. It's starting to kind of rain now, so I'm just gonna let it run. 
keep the heat on. We'll see what happens. All right, so she's been running for a little while. The thermostat opened up, so that's good. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it's it's really hot in here, so this might actually feel cold compared to what the rest of the, the inside of the car feels like. But uh, I'm gonna say she doesn't really have heat at this time, so this is probably going to be a, uh, you know, an ongoing procedure. I just opened up the bleeder on the, uh, on the thermostat, and uh, it shot out coolant, so this hose is piping hot. I don't see anything leaking, and I don't see anything steaming. Other than what I spilled and opened up right there, you know, burned. So, and this one here, that should be, that should be good there. Everything that you see over here is from when I pulled the bottle out, so... Yeah, like I said, she's not really, she's not really steaming uh, or leaking other than what I did, so. She's getting real good heat now. You can really feel it now, so. I think we're good. Real good heat. All right, so I think we're just gonna call the vlog now. It's a really long video. Hope you guys stuck around. Hope it gave some of you guys an insight as to what you gotta do to change a radiator on an Aztec. And, uh, yep, at this point in time, all I gotta do is get transmission fluid in it, power steering fluid in it, get some front brakes and some front tires, and technically she is then ready to be driven. Um, a couple of other little things, you know, that we, we're gonna have to take care of, but the, the mechanical thing should be good at this point. Gotta get some good gas treatment in her out, because I think I messed her up with the, uh, Oh, you know, running out of gas, so we need some good gas treatment or something. That's it. She's, she's just about ready. So if you guys enjoyed this vlog, if you guys thought it was maybe a little bit helpful in some way or just entertaining, I don't know. You guys just like the Aztec and all the progress we've done to it so far, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment and also subscribe. And I also have merchandise at teespring.com slash door slash Mike's People Spotlight. So if you want to order anything vlog tech related or just anything else, any other Mike's People Spotlight or vlog t-shirts, whatnot, go for it. I'll see you guys next time. So thank you so much for watching. Take care.